presented to Mike Katz, guest of honor, Mr. World, Mr. Olympia Runner-Up, professional football player for the New York Jets, teacher of exercise to untold numbers of young people, pioneer gym owner, and early advocate for the Special Olympics. With appreciation for your great talent, achievements, and dedication, we proudly present you with our AOBS Big Bob Highest Achievement Award. Well, we're extremely fortunate to have this honoree with us tonight. As many of you know, he had a devastating fall off the roof of his house, and I'm sure he may mention that to you when he comes up here. We could have lost yet another great, but his recovery has just been remarkable, as has been his career over the years. From a young, stocky 11-year-old kid, to high school All-American, to a feared college player, to the New York Jets, to bodybuilding competitions, to pumping iron fame, to one of the most popular bodybuilders in the world, to famous gym owner, and to this honored platform. That was one heck of a ride along the way. And this honoree was never a skinny kid who had sand kicked in his face, and I can vouch for that. But he was just 11 years old, and after seeing an old Hercules movie starring Steve Reeves, what did he do, like many other people did? He acquired some waste. Got some nice old uh, shorts from uh, York. Had a makeshift gym in his basement, as many of us did back in those days. But he was kind of young at the time. And at 15 years old, what he would do is, he would travel from his home, which was in Hamden, Connecticut, all the way to the Meredith, Connecticut, YMCA. And that's quite a little run for a 15-year-old without, without a car and without the roads that we have today. But when he could, he would grab a ride with our own John Barone over there, who in his own right has way too many titles for any of us to remember, except for John, of course. And when John wasn't around, he would hitchhike between those two distances at that age. And I think that commitment at that age to anything like that was for the mood. That was also around the Joe Abenda era. And I believe Joe guest posed at the Meriden YMCA back then when Mike was there. And of course, Mike witnessed Joe's guest pose. Besides Reeves, another influence back then on Mike's life was Joe Laporte. I didn't know Joe Laporte, but I knew of his many accomplishments in the game. From the YMCA in Meriden, it was on to the New Haven YMCA. And it was there, well I started going to the New Haven YMCA sometime in the 60s, but I just went there to play basketball at the time. And then I would uh, maybe one day a week hit the weight room, and then maybe two days a week hit the weight room. Probably about in the early 70s, I was in the weight room on a regular basis, and that's where I got to know Mike. Uh, very well at that time, and of course I've heard about him prior to that. At about 16, 17, he entered the Teenage America, where he placed third or fourth, I believe, and that was down in Tennessee, and at that show, the great Paul Anderson was performing, so Mike got to see the strength feats of, uh, of Paul Anderson at that time. High school and college were really difficult times to train and compete at the same time, but he did, really to get his feet wet, so to speak. In high school, he played three sports. There's not a lot of time between sports, but you're doing three of them in high school. But he did find time to keep his feet wet in bodybuilding. Mike was a devastating and intimidating player, both on the field and on the ice, which people forget about. An All-American high school player, he was All-State and All-New England in hockey. Actually, he had more offers going to college in hockey than he did in football. And we were talking about that a little bit, and I just, a few days ago, Mike, I ran into uh, Dick, Dickie Hildebrand, and I mentioned the word my cast to it, and all I did was kind of step back and smile a little bit. I'm not quite sure what that meant at the time. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure about that. Now, you got to picture this way back then. I mean, this is something, and you got to picture this. Here's a muscular bodybuilder back then, tipping the scales close to 260 pounds and running a 4.740. That's 4.7 seconds in a 40-yard dash. And if you don't think that's something, what about 10 flat in the 100? So as a free agent with the Jets, they must have said, look, we got something going here. We better keep this guy around for a day or two anyway and see what we got. 
You know, I attended the same college that Mike did the year after he graduated, thank God. And I heard stories about this big guy who was running like a halfback. And when you're a freshman, you're on the dummy squad, and you practice at full speed, full pass against the boxes every day back then. Nowadays, they don't hit it all during the week. But that's what they did back then. And one of his leftover uh, buddies there, Dick Nassara, I still have his footprints going up my stomach and my chest and, and my face. And that was the leftover from his day. I also had the pleasure of watching him play with the Jets. But like many, he went down with a devastating knee. But just think about this, what, what might have happened. You got a guy who is so big, so strong, so quick, so savvy in the game of football. It's just, you just imagine what may have happened. Of course, we can say that about a lot of people. But here, not all was lost, because now it was full-time in bodybuilding, and it was also full-time as a classroom teacher. And just a few years back, he retired after, I don't know, 33 or 35 years of teaching in the classroom. I mean, that's a feat in and of itself. I know because I did almost the same amount as he did. He entered, placed, and won in many competitions along the way. The Mr. Pettigate, Ed Jubinville shows. And these were all great, great building blocks. And Ed Jubinville shows. And anyone who was anyone in bodybuilding was there at one time or another. As a competitor, as a guest poser, a judge, or just simply the audience like Pumping Iron was back then. Since 1968, some of the other shows uh, entered and, uh, and won. 70 America, uh, Junior America, 72 Mr. World, 72 Tall Class Mr. Universe, 76 Runner Up, Heavyweight Class Mr. Olympia. In 1979, he opened up his first World Gym, first one on the East Coast. And in uh, 83, I believe, was the second World Gym. And now he has five Planet Fitness gyms. He's done all this with his longtime partner, uh, Jerry Mastragio. And I knew Jerry when he, way back when he was in college. He worked out with us at the YMCA in New Haven also. And Jerry, in his own right, was a good bodybuilder. I judged him in many shows, and Jerry won a lot of shows. And Jerry, along with Mike's son, Mike Jr., they run the day-to-day -day affairs of all the of all the gyms. Being one of the most popular bodybuilders of his time, he found his way into the book Pumping Iron in 1970, and again into the movie or the documentary in, in uh, 1975. And if I remember right, and maybe Mike can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong on this. But in the Yale University area of New Haven on Broadway, there was a little theater there. And it was called the York Square Cinema, I believe. And when Pumping Iron was being, it was being shown there, and Mike would guest pose on the stage uh, at intermissions or between showings. So you have to picture this also. Here's this tiny theater, and here's this big guy on the stage, a really local guy who made it big, and the audience is full. Full, oh, sold out of local people. And they're going crazy. But at one point in time, it was one of the shows, this went on for a few nights, I believe, and I, I was there, I think I was there every night, or every time they showed it. But there was one time, he's posing and people are going crazy. And all of a sudden he does a double bicep. Boom! Lights go out. I mean, just imagine if people are going crazy and this big guy is on stage, big double bicep, boom, lights out. People are nuts in this place. Now, I'm thinking later on, and this is only like a couple of weeks ago, no one might. I don't know if he planned that or if he didn't. But whether he did or didn't, it worked. When I just happened to think about that the other day about those lights, I forgot all about that. And as Pumping Iron goes, all this came about, or a lot of it came about, and where else but at a Jubilee venue at Mountain Park. It seemed like everything was going on there. I remember when Arnold was there, Mike was there. It was like, I mean, it was just, even a normal show without having these guys there, a so-called normal Jubilee show was just crazy. Three times, three times a year. But those are, those are great times. 
And what does he do today? Well, today he spends most of the time with his with his grandkids and uh, uh, still working out and still trying to and still staying in shape and uh, and taking care of the gym. So being semi-retired, also from the gym, not involved in the day-to-day -day affairs, but of course keeps his hands in it. Of course. Ladies and gentlemen, from high school All-American, the New York Jets, to one of the biggest things in bodybuilding, the man with the 60-inch chest, Mike Cass. <laughs> I'd like to thank Artie, of course, Nick, and everyone who is making this effort possible each year. Uh, I, I'm speechless uh, with the words that have been said, uh, tears you know, come to my eyes, honestly, over, you know, I'm trying to get a grasp, but I was, I guess I was a pretty good guy, you know, that did a lot of good things. It, uh, I never dwell on it, you know, when I get an award like this, it uh, just kind of, I know that, uh, you know, I had a reason to be born. I know that my parents were proud of me and are still proud of me, and, uh, the amount of friends and uh, people in the audience who are well-deserved champions and also members of this wonderful organization. Um, for me to be in, in the same um, category, you know, in the list of, of the people who I never in my wildest dreams ever thought I could even be in that same company. Um, you know, Bill Pearl and Dave Draper and John Grimmick and, uh, I mean, I, when I start listing things that, you know, names, it, I'm not going to get everybody. I'm going to sure as heck try to get everybody, uh, and honestly, um, I'm going to, I'm going to honor everyone out there, plus those people who were not able to be here because they've either passed away or because uh, they had other commitments that could not bring them here tonight. I'd like to thank Fred Yale, one of my closest of all friends. I'd like to also uh, I'd like to also thank uh, John Verone. John and I went in a little bit different paths over the last 30 or 40 years. There's no reason for it. I could never understand it. And hopefully this banquet will bring us together like we always were when we were kids. Thanks, Thanks John. Ed Cubanville, I love you. John Nicola, Nicola, you are inspiration. Always have been, always will be. Tommy Abar, it was great to see you again. And hope that I, I'm able to be here as long as I stay off of Brooks. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be here next year. <coughs> Dave Masterakis from New England, my good friend and loyal loyal friend Tommy Minicello, who I know could not be here, but there's a guy who's, you know, like my father, he cared to talk that much. And even though Ed and Tommy stood up for me at a show, at a world championship, they both went against what two brothers wanted to do to me. And they stood up to them. And uh, unfortunately, Jubinville never made it quick for him again over it, which was probably a multi-million dollar loyalty, show of loyalty to me in one of the world championships. I don't need this. Name names because those people know what I'm talking about. 
will understand what happened. I will never forget Eddie, and I'll never forget Tommy and Joe for standing by me in, the, in, that, in, the, in those times. You know, Steve Reeves, as Fred said, you know, nine years old, you know, I go into the local movie theater, I see this guy pulling down columns, you know, in Venice, Italy, and I'm saying, you know what, this is like, this is what I want to do, you know, I'm so impressionable, because as a pumping iron, that was not just fake. I mean, I, I lived in a Catholic neighborhood with a Jewish name, and was made fun of, Jew boy, four eyes, porky, every possible thing. I used to go up in my backyard, 40 feet up a pine tree, and almost jumped so many times you would never believe. I think one of the reasons I taught health education and suicide prevention was because I didn't jump being made fun of and being bullied when I was a kid. And I said I'd show them and uh, worked real, real hard to become accepted by girls, be accepted by people, because I was a great athlete. And isn't it unfortunate that I had to become a great athlete for me to get any respect? Oh, you're not fat anymore. And you know, so what? I wear glasses, so do you. And you're Jewish, so what? I'll tell you one thing, you know, I don't have the speech plan, so I'm just kind of moving in a lot of directions. The one thing I can tell you about Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I would say this and say this and say this, I would train with him for five years in California. When teaching was over, I would go to California and train during the summers. And one time, Weeder wouldn't pay me. He didn't pay a lot of people. But Arnold was my buddy, and Arnold stood up for me. And when I needed to get paid, because I'd write articles and I needed the money because I wasn't working and I had no way to support my children. So Arnold says, you know, don't worry about it, I'll get the money. And he would go into the office out of Wilmington Hills and get my paycheck. And then, you know, I would I would start acting, you know, sad or negative and depressed because I'm getting no money, I'm waiting for Arnold to get it for me. And Arnold, and Arnold said to me, when I was feeling real bad one day, he said, I never met a Jew who was a quitter. <laughs> and, 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 and here's a guy with a Nazi father, you know, who, who, who was obviously, uh, who, you know, caring about his friend and just, you know, slapping me in the face a few times, basically saying, you know, Jews don't quit. And I never forgot that, and I never quit after that. You never see anything negative about me after he said that. To me. So I admire Arnold for that. There's some things I don't admire him for. But, you know, a ten-year-old, but um, I don't usually talk often from notes. But I, I just want to make sure I can try to cover everybody, and then I'm going to let the program uh, continue. Thanks to Bob Hoffman. Thanks to the the uh, workout posters of Clarence Ross in my basement when I was 10. I stole two, you know, milk crates, those wooden egg uh, milk crates. And milk used to come in, I got a two by 12, and that was my bench. And I would look at those pictures, and every day I'd try to look as good as Clarence Ross and, 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 and uh, Bill Pearl, and, uh, uh, Joe Benda. These were guys that I admired and, and wanted to be like. And, and, and you know, the other thing that's nice about them is they're nice people. Uh, I, I know Joe Ben, he's a teacher. I know Joe LaPorte from the Meriden Y. Um, these were just first class people. And, and as you know, Bill Perl and Dave Draper are just about as nice of guys as you, you can find. My, uh, my training partners, who many of you would not know, I'd just like to thank them. Anibal Almodovar, Guy Ferraro, Jerry Mastrangelo, my best friend, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thank you for helping me to attain the success that I've had. 35 years of teaching kids. Another thing, very quickly, that, that has bothered me uh, for a long time is when Vietnam came, I was educated to be a teacher. 
I wanted to play professional football, not for long, because I wanted to be Mr. America more than play professional football. That's why I, I retired. I didn't get cut. I said, I'm done. It's on to Mr. America and also to teach school. And um, 1970, many of my friends came home with body bags from Vietnam. I will never forget those military funerals. And I have, um, um, I think God had me teach instead of go to Vietnam because I think the effects that I've had on 35,000 students in 35 years has been uh, what my call was to be a teacher, not a soldier. I, uh, I have a few other people who I, I'd like to thank. And uh, John Taylor, uh, who I respect more than any other person who cares truly and you can see it in his magazine and in his publication and his, re and his respect for the sport. Uh, Artie Zeller made my career. Another fellow named Caruso, a great photographer from Montreal. Um, these, these were guys that, that, that made it all happen for me. So I appreciate your love and your attention. I never, ever thought um, you know, that I would be honored by this group. And as I said, I am humbled and will cherish the night for the rest of my life. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. Hello. And as usual, the Michelangelo muscle, Jim Sanders has phenomenal artwork. And he's going to present to Mike Cass right now. Mike Cass, a Pokemon Fame ALDS honoree. Let's hear it. I've got your hand.